Invenergy, a leading developer of sustainable energy solutions, announced the closure of its acquisition of American Electric Power's roughly 1.4 gigawatt unregulated contracted renewables portfolio for, hold your, onto your seats, $1.5 billion. Uh, the acquisition was carried out by a number of large uh, financial companies, in, including Blackstone uh, Infrastructure Partners. So this acquisition by Invenergy, you know, makes them really large uh, and a, a large player in the United States market for sure. Now, the weird thing about this is because the IRA bill is happening in the middle of this of this transaction, uh, they needed to have a way to handle the production tax credit. So they created a financial vehicle and IRG acquisition holdings uh, basically created a, a $580 million uh, commitment for those production tax credits to be rolled over to Invenergy from AEP. It sounds like, Phil, does, does that make sense? Um, the, the production tax credit is sort of a weird old system, right? It's. I think it's based on the legacy ownership of the um, the production tax credit rights and the royalty payments associated with it. So I think this is just a financial mechanism where they're paying for, Invenergy's paying for the opportunity to claim the, the PTC revenue associated with this project um, and any subsequent repowering of, of the project. If in the audience we do have someone that is a PTC uh, credit specialist for a law firm or something, reach out because we'd love to have a conversation. So, you know, we're, we're armchair uh, experts about the PTC credits and we've read the bills and we kind of understand how the whole system works. But to have a uh, get someone in here that is a true true expert would be kind of exciting, I think. How does that play out in terms of the IRA bill also, right? Because there's a lot of incentives in the IRA bill. Do those automatically roll over to Invenergy? Or does AEP have to delegate those or just transfer them over? There's, there's a lot of – with the federal government being involved in a lot of these financial transactions because of the tax credits, they must have some intrinsic value when you purchase the assets, Right. I would think they would just go right with them. I don't understand why there's a need for a vehicle. And that's kind of why I'm a little bit lost here is like whoever owns the assets, whoever's producing the kilowatt hours of energy should get the credits. That seems pretty basic to me, but uh, there's definitely something here going on. I don't understand. Is this a repowering play, Phil, in the long terms? The key to this is the fact that this um, asset portfolio, uh, according to AEP and Invenergy, is the unregulated uh, assets, meaning that presumably they're selling most of the power on the merchant market. Um, and, you know, uh, repowering a, a merchant, uh, a merchant fed plant, um, is a, it's a crapshoot basically, you know, you're, you're counting on the merchant power price being above a particular level in order for you to be able to make back your, um, you know, your initial capital investment on a project. And so if the merchant power price drops uh, enough, then, you know, you're, you're in a position where you may not, you may have to repower multiple times, or you may have um, other need to be able to extract additional value out of your asset to be able to pay back the um, upfront capital that you spent on um, the construction or the repowering of it in the first place. Bill, is there a situation where, where say, Invenergy takes over these unregulated assets and then goes to, they may, they may be, you know, on the merchant market and then says, you know what, we'd like to secure power purchase agreements for these. And then they could go into that, whatever sector would be, or or even uh, private power purchase agreements. Does, is that, do you think we'll start to see some of that to, so they can safeguard their bottom line? Maybe. <laughs> um, the reason I'm hesitating about it is that would obviously be ideal. Yes, they're allowed to do it, uh, first of all. Uh, it would be ideal for them if they could, because obviously a fixed price contract is more predictable, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But the, the trick with this is that even the merchant market operators, like your MISOs and your, your COTS of the world, they want more capacity taken out of the merchant market and into a fixed PPA, whether it's corporate or utility, whatever. Um, because then it frees up more space in the merchant market where new projects that are in the consent queue can get built and, uh, and approved. So there's, there's every, um, 
interest and incentive from a lot of the, the market participants uh, to be able to, to do that. It's just a question of demand. The utility PPA market is fairly well saturated. Um, and again, without additional consumer or industrial um, demand for, for electricity increasing, you're not going to see the utilities wanting to strike more PPAs. Um, but the corporate power offtake agreements is an interesting market because it's grown. It's continuing to, you know, and will continue to grow. Um, and it could offer some of these companies that mechanism to get either a fixed price or some kind of, you know, um, floor and ceiling type of hedge uh, on the, the power pricing uh, that they get off the, the merchant market. So it, it can offer an incentive, yes. Yes.